Going sockless. It's a divisive issue. If you're a single man and you've swiped on Tinder, normally one in 10 women will say, seeing a man sockless is one of their biggest red flags. Don't be a simp. Going sockless is crucial to having your armory. It's not something you wanna do all the time. It's not something that every outfit will go along with, but it's a really important staple in menswear. I just wanted to run through a few important things I've put together on going sockless, the perils of it, what to do, how to prepare. These are, these are the important subjects. These are the important things that we all need and want to know. So first and foremost is suitability. When is it appropriate? When is it not appropriate? Picking and choosing when to go sockless with an outfit. But if it's summertime, sockless is pretty much doable in most occasions. If you're in a hot weather country, if you're at a wedding in a hot weather country, now that this, this is debatable, I th I'd say going sockless is absolutely fine. Going sockless at a wedding can be one of the tricky things. Uh, for my personal rule, I'd say sockless in a warm country, sockless in really hot weather, but be sparing with it. If you're in England, I'd say not to. I'd say probably not. But you know, you have to pick, it's each everyone's own risk. Be responsible, be careful, be safe. You see, everyone's got their own opinion on what's appropriate and what's not. Some people just don't care. I'm pretty live with it, but mostly when it's hot weather. Number two, and this goes along with the hot weather point. Think about the tan of your skin. Think about, uh, if, you're, if you've got, you know, it's summertime, and you've got a little bit of color in your face and your arms, but your ankles are gonna be showing pasty white. You don't have to go full to fake tan, but just think about a bit of build-up lotion. There's some products out there, you just a little bit of moisturizer with it, that build up a little bit of a tan that you could just rub on your ankles and it will just take away a little bit of that milkiness. Or alternatively, when you're outside, make sure that your ankles get a good bit of sun. So the next point is socks. You don't have to go completely sockless to go sockless. There are two different types of, well, there's probably more than two, but there's two main types of um, socks that you can wear. There's the ankle socks, if you're if you're going a little bit higher, if you say you're wearing um, a higher trainer, then ankle socks will do, they might just peep over the top, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. If you're going for loafers, you're going for a, more of a low top, then it's absolutely crucial that you can't see the socks at all. So there's some invisible socks out there, which are just, they just, they just nestle the each ends of your foot like that and then just go underneath and they're elasticated. You don't want to be seen in them on their own. That's a real mood killer. So if you do get lucky, just when you take your when you take your shoes off, just slip them off and put them, tuck them down the bottom. It's a little top tip for you there. Speaking of if you get lucky, smell, odors. These are really important things. This is what people who don't go sockless use against us people who do, and that is smells. So first of all, a good pair of leather shoes is a, a, a must. Or a good pair of shoes in general if it's, it's, it's trainers. The better the material, the less chance it's gonna be all stinky and horrible. Um, with trainers, you can wash the insoles. Uh, with loafers, you can do things like wipe them down with some antibacterial wipes. With shoes, you can use a cedar shoe tree, but this is a whole different ball game. This is if you're super nerdy about this stuff. You have to like shave the cedar tr tree shoe wood bit uh, every year, and but it does help with smell and it helps with the shape. I personally, it's not my bag. I'm not going that far. I wear pre-owned shoes most of the time, so you know, you just got to make do with what you got. Also, there are plenty of sprays and odor eaters and things like that out there. Check Amazon, check the ratings. So next up is getting the right length. You don't want to be going three quarter lengths. That's the most important thing. Other than that, it's pretty much as you see fit. I am quite conservative with it. I just like to see a little bit of ankle. Some people like to go a little bit higher. It depends on the outfit as well and the shape of the trousers, but generally just be careful about going too short. Going too long will just be trousers. So. Don't worry about that. So the other things to think about is the actual fit, the whole silhouette of the outfit you're wearing and to think about if going sockless is appropriate. And a rule within a rule, buy a full length mirror. Honestly, it's the most important thing in a man's wardrobe that's outside the man's wardrobe. It's so important that you get a full look at your full fit before anything. So please get a full length mirror. Once you've done that, you can go to this rule, which is looking at the shape of the fit. Personally, the, what, the most important thing here is don't go too slim. Don't go to uh, like elasticated trousers in general. Just don't wear them. Uh, yeah, don't go too skinny. Don't do, go too slim. It's just not a good look when you go too skinny. You can see the 
outline of your calf. And that's pretty much it. Obviously, it depends on your style and your look for everything else, so we won't go into that. It's just, don't go too skinny. Other thing to think about is type of shoes. Loafers, of course, do, and the likes. Those low, the low rise shoes, go sockless, go, go for it. Sometimes Oxfords you can pull off. I mean, you, like it can be done. Depending on the full outfit, you've really got to just take that into account. What you, what you're trying to get out there. Obviously, trainers you can do, but yeah, things like boots. I mean, it doesn't really matter visually, but don't do that. Blister protection, absolutely crucial. So I've been known to keep those little silicone blister things in my in my pocket if I know that I'm wearing some new loafers that haven't been worn in yet or they haven't been worn in by me. It's crucial you can get little plasters if you get caught short just find a boots or something or a chemist where you can buy these things always along with your prophylactics keep your blister protection don't get them mixed up alternatively if you've got some new shoes wear them around the house get them worn in while you're, while you're comfortable and indoors put some socks on wear them around in your pajamas do, do that and you want to see thank me later it's a, it's a great shout also going sockless isn't just for trousers and chinos i love a pair of jeans sometimes wide-legged with some loafers no socks with a little roll up that's a really a really great look uh, i'm a big fan of it there you have it my personal rules for going sockless i mean it's all there, there are no rules but my sort of guidelines um have i missed any out drop a comment below if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe check out archer and woods uh, for pre-owned menswear and vintage watches archer and woods on the socials look forward to hearing from you cheers